Mysterious ship trapped in a time loop since the 1930s. Welcome back to Popcorn Time Movie Digest. Today I will show you a science fiction psychological thriller film from 2009, titled Triangle, spoilers alert watch out and take care. The film opens with Jess at home comforting her autistic son Tommy who's suffering from a nightmare. Jess is a strung out single parent noticeably exhausted from looking after her autistic young son. She's dressed up and preparing to take Tommy on a boat trip with her friend and Greg. She cleans up paint on the floor that Tommy spilled and messes her dress up. Suddenly, Jess hears the doorbell ring. Jess goes to see who it was but finds no one there. She asks a neighbor who was working in his yard, he claims he didn't see anyone. Jess tries to calm her son down, who's throwing a tantrum, she picks him up and takes him to the car. She packs a bag, hops into her car, and drives out to the harbor. Waiting at the yacht is Greg along with his friend a married couple, Sally and Downey, Sally introduces her friend Heather to Greg, she hopes Greg will be romantically interested in her friend, Heather. Sometime afterward, Greg spots Jess and Victor arrive. Victor is a young teen taken in by Greg. Jess arrives at a harbor without Tommy. Greg had also invited Jess to bring her son Tommy with her, but when he asks Jess where he is, Jess hesitates for a moment with a troubled face, before saying he's at school. She explains that she's simply tired and doesn't want to ruin the trip for everyone else. Greg introduces Jess to everyone and gets the boat ready to sail. While out at the sea, Jess sleeps in the cabin because of exhaustion, she had a terrible dream of being washed onto the shore. She wakes up startled but she doesn't remember her dream, she sees Heather offering her champagne. Heather and Jess come up from the cabin. Greg encourages Jess to steer the yacht to uplift her mood. Greg explains to Jess that Victor has been living with him after running away from a troubled home. Downey and Sally are his friends from school, who always try to set him up with someone, Jess wonders if they think he's lonely. Greg insists that he's not but reveals that he intentionally visited Jess at the diner, the day before to invite her to sail. The crew seems to be sailing along okay when the wind suddenly dies down. Also of question is a strange electrical storm that is steadily approaching. The group watches the cloud, unsure of what to do, Greg tries to radio the Coast Guard but finds their communications wavering. Another communication comes across, the radio goes static then picks up the frequency of a frightened woman's calling for help. Greg's request for coordinates of this unknown communication soon gives way to more static. The champagne and awkward chatter are soon interrupted when a freak storm breaks out. The storm soon reaches the yacht, Victor and Greg attempt to get the boat to safety while the guests hide in the cabin. The yacht capsizes but not before Heather is swept out of the boat into the stormy waters. Apparently, the incident drowns Heather and leaving the rest of the survivors bobbing about in the middle of the ocean. The clouds clear up, but still no sign of Heather. Greg assures Jess that Tommy will be looked after until they return. On the upturned boat, the group sits helplessly waiting for someone to come rescue them. When seemingly out of nowhere, a large cruise ship floats into view, they call for help and saw someone on the deck. The group is hopeful but just watches it with suspicion. Finally, this ship reaches them, they quickly board it and find the place seemed eerily deserted. Victor calls for anyone on board, but no one answers. Greg suggests heading to the bridge and talking to the captain, Sally hopes that Heather made it on board. As they crisscross through the corridors of the ship, Jess begins to have an eerie sense of deja vu. They discover that the ship's name is Elis, and they realize the whole ship seems trapped in time, as though it's been floating around unmanned since the 1930s. The ship is named after the Greek god of wind Elis, whose son Sisyphus, is punished for cheating death by spending eternity pushing a boulder up a hill repeatedly. As they keep moving around the ship, a sudden noise catches their attention. What they find is a set of car keys that are exactly like the set that Jess carries. No one is sure what this means, and the search continues. They see fresh food laid out but still without anyone else in sight. Jess spots someone watching them and Victor runs ahead to give chase. Greg decides to go to the bridge by himself, telling them to wait for Victor, Jess follows Greg, leaving the couple behind. Greg is tired of how everyone is acting arguing to Jess that she's just in shock. They stop as they hear noise from down the hall, Greg finds the cabin door where the noise is coming from. Inside the cabin's bathroom, there's a message on the mirror saying go to theater written in blood on a mirror. Meanwhile, Victor continues to hunt down the person just saw earlier, he hears loud sounds from afar and follows outside. Back to Jess and Greg, Greg argues that her paranoia has her fabricating her own little world in her mind. Just reminds him that her world is her son, making him feel guilty. Sally and Downey follow a trail of blood out the deck, they decided to head to the theater since the blood is heading there anyway. Jess returns to the dining room, where the food is now rotting. 
she hears a movement and hides, she sees Victor injured enters, she goes to aid him but Victor, covered in blood, tries to kill her, Jess fights him off and finds a wound at the back of his head and pushes it. This causes Victor to collapse and release her, she hears gunfire and follows it to a theater to investigate. Jess finds Sally and Downey cradling Greg dead of a gunshot. Sally accuses her of firing at Greg as Greg told them Jess shot him. Jess tells them that she was with Victor who was also hurt. Downey tells her that Jess was the one who told them to go to the theater, but she insists that she did not. Suddenly, more gunshots ring out, with Sally and Downey being killed. Jess runs for her life, reaching the engine room to hide. She runs to the kitchen and grabs a knife for protection, she goes out to the deck but is hit on the head with the back of the gun. The shooter comes forward as she begs for her life. When the shooter pulls the trigger, she diverts the weapon away missing her. The gun jams causing the shooter to throw it at her as she climbs over the rails of the ship. Jess stumbles down but gets back on her feet quickly running to the back of the ship, she misleads the shooter by throws a broken valve across the deck. Jess swings the axe at the burlap masked shooter who attempts to hit her with a crowbar, she disarms the shooter, who tells her you have to kill them, it's the only way to get home before falling overboard. With everyone around her seemingly dead and no idea who the masked person was, Jess goes to a cabin on the ship, only to hear yelling from off the boat a few moments later. She sees Greg's overturned yacht with Greg, Sally, Victor Downey, and herself alive and calling the ship, confused, Jess backs away. After they board, Jess becomes the earlier unseen figure, she drops her keys near the display case at runs. Jess hears Victor coming, and she gets an idea when Victor sees her explaining what happened to her, telling him that the one they are with is a copy of her. Jess desperately tries to convince Victor, but he doesn't believe her. He tries to go away, but accidentally impale his head on a wall hook. Victor pulls away bearing a wound at the back of his head. Horrified Jess runs away, narrowly avoiding the new Jess and Greg. She ends up in the crew's locker room where she finds dozens of duplicates of the shooter's outfit, shotgun, her own locket, and a note with her own handwriting saying to kill them. In one area, Jess finds a locket she wore with her son's pictures inside hanging from a small grate. When she looks further inside, she sees there are multiples, as if this same incident has happened before. Jess realized that she has been in this exact same scenario multiple times. She grabs a burlap sack and takes a shotgun, intending to change the pattern. The new group continues their journey with Sally, Downey, and Greg heading to the theater. Jess comes across the new Victor, who was alarmed to see the shotgun in her hand, she tells him that she didn't mean to hurt him and wants to save them. During this time, the new Jess walks into the lounge, looking for Sally, to breaking the pattern, the original Jess reveals herself confusing both the new Victor and new Jess. The original Jess mustered up the courage to shoot her own self but can't, letting the new Jess escape, she turns to Victor promising him that they will all escape together. A gunshot distracts Jess, she goes to the theater, knowing what will happen. She shoves Sally and Downey out of the way when the shooter fires at them. She helps the couple escape the theater, explaining that they can escape if they change the pattern, she tells them to wait while Jess retrieves Victor. The original Jess follows a trail of blood and sees it stop at the edge of the deck, Victor had fallen into the water. Meanwhile, the shooter Jess removes her cloak and tells the couple that Victor fell to the side of the boat. She said they need to follow her to safety. Shooter Jess gets the couple inside a bedroom, where she stabs them. The original Jess chases Sally. Sally thinks that it was her who stabbed them. Sally hides in the engine room and sends the distress signal which Greg heard on the yacht. Jess catches up to her on a deck filled with dozens of Sally corpses, and Sally succumbs to her wound. The original Jess reassures her that she's not the same Jess that hurt her and Downey, then a ruckus at the bottom deck alerts the original Jess, she sees the new Jess fighting the shooter Jess before throwing the shooter off the ship. The overturned boat returns again, and Jess soon realizes that she is trapped in a time loop, that repeats itself when everyone on the ship is killed. Jess runs down the deck, seeing the overturned yacht getting far. Mentally fearful that she may never see her son again, Jess attempts to follow the events of what happened and sets everything from the first loop into motion, with herself as the shooter. Now that she has set up everything from the first loop in motion, Jess disguises herself as the new shooter. The same pattern of events happened until the confrontation with the new Jess, causing the original Jess to fall in the water. The original Jess wakes up by the beach being washed ashore, the same one she saw in her dream at the yacht. Jess makes her way to her house, relieved that she has escaped. She returns home and watches from outside her house as her double abuses Tommy out of anger toward his autism. Tommy sees her from the window and accidentally spills the paint on the floor, Jess cries, listening to herself slap and yell at Tommy for making a mess. 
Promising to change, she distracts her counterpart with the doorbell, then walks around the backyard and grabs a hammer from the shed before going into the house without hesitation. She then uses the hammer, bludgeons her past self to death, then she turns to find that Tommy has seen the event. Since Tommy witnesses this, she embraces her son and convinces him that what he saw is just a bad dream. Jess then takes the locket from her former self's neck, and puts the dead body in a black duffel bag, before putting it in her car's trunk. Jess then proceeds to drive her son to school, promising that things are going to be different from now on. As they drive along the ocean, a gull hits their windscreen and dies, but when she picks it up and disposes of it, she sees a pile of dead gulls. Realizing that she is still trapped in the loop, Jess hurriedly drives away but crashes into a truck, and Tommy is killed and the earlier double whom Jess killed is seen dead at the scene. In the aftermath, the original just stares blankly watching the accident scene. A taxi driver approaches, saying that there's nothing that anyone can do now. Jess then requests the driver take her to the harbor. After promising to return, she joins the others on Greg's boat, starting the loop again. Explaining the ending of Triangle In the movie's third act, Jess falls overboard, wakes up on a beach, and miraculously works her way back to civilization. For the briefest, strangest moment, it seems as though her ordeal is over, that is until she reaches her front door and realizes there's a version of herself at home with her son. It's here that we see another side to Jess for the first time, not just her weariness at looking after her child by herself, but also her anger and physical aggression. While the movie doesn't spell it out plainly, the suggestion seems to be that, back at the beginning of the film, Jess accidentally killed her son in a burst of rage. Shocked and dazed after this act, Jess then boarded the boat with Greg and Victor, Victor even notes the strange way Jess reacts when he asks where Tommy is. The events after the storm could then be read as a kind of purgatory or eternal punishment. A cycle of torment. Having committed the terrible sin of killing her own son, Jess is fated to experience the same emotions of guilt and desperation over and over again. This infinite loop could have begun in the harbor when Jess refused to accept what happened to her son. The mysterious taxi driver reminds Jess that she has killed her son, who is now dead. He tells her that if she accepts this fact he can take her away. Arriving at the destination, the taxi driver asks if she should be expected. She answers in the affirmative. Thus, giving a promise that cannot keep. This action leads the heroine to a situation in which the ancient Greek character Sisyphus fell, the son of the Lord of the Winds Aeolus the name of the ghostly liner, who decided to deceive death, and therefore was punished by eternal useless work. This comparison brings us to the realization that no matter what attempts Jess makes to break the loop, all this will turn out to be meaningless Sisyphus's work. The taxi driver represents death's messenger waiting for her to accept the truth and be set free from her circle of eternal suffering. Nevertheless, Jess remains unable to come to terms with her situation. She subsequently journeys on to join the sailing trip to relive the phenomenon all over again. Jess will therefore stay trapped inside a circle of suffering like the son of King Aeolus, Sisyphus. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.